Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about lower back pain with powerlifting and usually the instance of why we can feel a little bit more beat up by the end of the block. So it's very normal to feel like powerlifting starts to make you feel a little bit more rounded, fatigued, tired, even just like a little bit sore through the lower back. So today what me and the boys are going to take you through are some ways that we can look for the signs and the symptoms, some exercises we can use to treat, and the way that you can almost auto-regulate these exercises as you're going through your block of training. Some of the signs and symptoms we can look for with this rounding or flexion that we've just suddenly been pushed into is just a feeling of not being able to push with our legs. So if we take, for example, a squat, we can feel like all of a sudden we lose that normal linear progression we were feeling throughout that block. We should have felt like we were able to add another five or 10 kilos that following week. But as a result of feeling like we weren't able to feel our legs pushing in the movement, the lift felt harder. Another sign of symptom could be a little bit of discomfort or pain through the lumbar, the hips, the SIJ, or just generally feeling stiff through our body. A lot of the time we tend to put this down to this just being the end of a block, but the main sort of mechanical reason is our body has just undergone a lot of flexion training, and as a result, we've started to lose our hip extension and lumbar extension. So, what do you do when this situation happens to you? The first thing that I would recommend you do is just essentially see where you're locking up. So if we're finding that we're locking up more through the lower back or through the pelvis, an easy way to find this out is by going through what we call a toe touch. So what we want to do here is essentially just try to go through um, bending over and touching your toes like you would go to tie up your shoelaces and see where you're feeling the most stiff. If you are feeling that through your lower back or through the top of the pelvis, you'd likely need to restore that with some extension based movements there. So how do we regulate this when we're trying to put this into our program, especially if we're trying to finish a block? The easiest way that I've found to regulate this with an athlete is by finding the optimal amount that they need. Now this is a little bit of a trial and error situation, but it's typically gonna be best if we start small and then build big. Especially if you're working with higher class athletes, you don't wanna to throw too much at them at the same time, because if you do, you can throw the rest of their program out of alignment. An example of not throwing someone's program out would be if they are requiring more lumbar extension or more, I guess, extension through the pelvis, the best way to do this would be, say, for example, the 45 back extension. Where I would start is by implementing, say, two sets of 12 in a warm-up, aiming to get full extension of the lumbar and full extension of the pelvis through this movement. And then if we're finding that that's not really doing too much for them, then we're adding another set or another two sets on a separate day that won't really impact their program as we move. As Chris mentioned before, auto-regulating is the best way to approach this. If you find that within two to three weeks that you're not seeing any um, changes in your pain levels or you feel like you're still getting stuck and stiff in some of your lifts, um, best to speak to your physical therapist or your allied health professional to get some help. Myself, Chris and Tom have put together three exercises ranging from easy, medium to hard to help you get into a little bit more extension and feel a little bit less stuck. These three exercises are the lumbar bridge, the 45 degree hyperextension, and the RDL. So the first exercise that Josh is demonstrating here is the lumbar back extension. The goal of this exercise is to get as much lumbar extension using the lumbar extensor muscles rather than the glutes. So we're not really focused on too much of how high we can get the hips, but rather that we're feeling the lumbar working. A nice cue that I like to use for this exercise is to try to think about relaxing your glutes and hips to let them hang towards the floor while you try to lift your belly button towards the roof. The next exercise that we're going to demonstrate is the 45 degree back extension. The focus of this exercise is to keep our legs locked by squeezing our quads and trying to come up as high as we can through the lumbar while not letting the knees bend at the top of the movement. The third exercise that we're going to demonstrate is a Romanian deadlift or an RDL. The reason that we've chosen this one here is because we can manipulate the way that we orientate our pelvis and in this case we're trying to get more lumbar extension so we're going to hold it in more of an anterior tilt. As you can see while I'm holding this anterior tilt I'm trying not to go too far down so that way I lose position. I'm trying to focus on making sure that I hold the anterior tilt throughout the whole movement while keeping the weight in the front of my foot. Here you go, here's your free key. 